Hey everyone, this is Christopher here with another episode of What's Brewing, and today we have the pleasure of interviewing Ben Pierce. But before we get into this video, let's roll that beautiful B-roll. Ben, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So I know that your legends are legendary, but for those who might not know, could you just share what you do and uh, who you are? Uh, well, yeah, my, my name's Ben Pierce. I, I grew up here in Lafayette. I'm the executive director for a nonprofit called Swamp Base, but I also uh, dabble a little bit in photography. Uh, I think a few po folks have noticed that. Uh, and by a few folks, like a few thousand uh, folks, uh, we are huge fans of what you do. Uh, we have bought your puzzle piece. If you guys don't know about this. He awesome. <laughs> He's got photos. You're in Prejeans now? I'm in Prejeans, yes. That's pretty cool. Totally jealous. I'm going to work on tons to see if I get my photo of an alligator in their restaurant. Just, nice. It's not a competition, <laughs> uh, but we, we admire your work, and I think you, you do a great job spotlighting really habitats and nature, and I think a lot of people are being influenced by that. So you're, I think your photography captures the spirit of Acadiana and really moves people, people like me and, of course, all of our team filming behind here in the cameras. Awesome. I, I appreciate it, but I was inspired by others as well, so... You know, if it goes back to, you know, when I first moved back to Lafayette uh, 10 years ago or so, I was following C.C. Lockwood and Greg Gerard, uh, two what I would consider kind of the, the grandfathers of swamp photography. So they inspired me, but I'm happy to continue passing that down. So, how, you know, obviously these are huge influences for you, but how did you, what made you jump in or what was the genesis of for photography for you? I mean, if you really go back, I'm a child of the 90s, so it was obviously a... a point and shoot disposable camera and just taking pictures of clouds and trying to think of I was like some kind of artist or whatever because you know the days when you can't draw anything you're, you're going to take photos that felt like the easy way but I was really kind of inspired to get into photography when I moved to North Carolina so I went to LSU graduated and we moved out to western North Carolina so I was hanging out in the mountains this is the early days of Facebook and Flickr and these other types of social media yeah. platforms and I was seeing this amazing landscape that was so far different from what I grew up in, you know, the cane fields, the rice fields, and seeing these rolling mountains and, and waterfalls. And I was like, man, I want to take some photos of these things to share with people back home. Mm -hmm. And so I, I started doing that. And I had a little Kodak point and shoot and it was like, I just really not capturing the essence of this place in the way that I think people back home need to see it. Mm. It just wasn't doing it for me. And yeah. so I started getting into a DSLR and talking with friends and just going out there and practicing. I mean, yep. it's, it, just getting on the road early, early four o'clock in the morning and trying to be that first person at that waterfall, studying whatever I could find, you know, buying a uh, photography for dummies book, you know, like yeah. there wasn't a whole lot of information that I could find because oh, there gosh. wasn't tens of thousands of people shooting or billions of photos being taken every day. There like wasn't YouTube and the internet like we no. have now where there's no. all these tutorials out there. No, I had a map quest directions printed out to try to get to my locations. I mean, it was, it was old school. Old school. Yeah, but only like 15, 18 years ago, so. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy how much uh, technology has changed things. Again, things like Flickr, which is a Yahoo company uh, or was or is a Yahoo company. Um, things like MapQuest. I was trying to think like when we would go on trips, like we would plug in a data card to my PC and have MapQuest on it. Like this is just wild. And, and I think folks don't realize how quickly technology has changed. Yeah. It's made it, I think, more accessible to the every person. But I just still think there's an art form to photography that we can all get the same equipment. And I often watch YouTube videos of photographers or see other ones' photos. And I'm like, they're shooting with the same camera I am, but somehow theirs looks better. <laughs> and I think that's there's an art to what you do. Obviously, it started somewhere. And I think you said something that really resonates is you put in the reps. You put in the energy oh, yeah. to and the practice and the what most folks just don't do. Yeah, I mean, my background was in landscape architecture. So I have an art background and just trying to see an environment and for what it is. Uh, when we do do projects out in the mountains, when I was in North Carolina, it's all about telling a story. And that was with, you know, whatever our client was wanting or, or the photos that we were using to try to sell a project to them. And so we always are thinking in that mindset, was mm -hmm. how do we tell a story? And, and photography is a great way. You, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, yeah. very cliche, but that's really what we were doing. Yeah. We had a photo here, we've got a series of images. And if we're trying to sell a project or inspire people, mm -hmm. The images that they see are really, really important. And so I was using that same kind of mindset in my in my hobby and my, you know, on the weekends to go and do that. So I was getting the trails and everything. And yeah, you said putting the reps. I mean, it's a lot of early, early mornings and late evenings yes. out there in the middle of nowhere uh, because you have to be there in order to get the shot. If, you, if you're not there, you're missing it. So. 
And some of those shots are very hard to uh, are hard to get because you want the certain light and right. a certain, you know, I see a lot of your shots have a lot of mood. Uh, you'll see like a mist on the on the, the the lake or something, and that's something that dissipates the minute a certain o'clock happens, right? right. Yep. You know, eight, nine, ten o'clock, it's gone, yep. and you've you've missed that magic moment. Well, I want to talk more about photography. Uh, so, are you okay with doing a second interview? Absolutely. Awesome. It was really great having you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that's it for this episode, folks, but stay tuned for part two, which will be next week. We hope that you've enjoyed this content, and if you did, do me a favor. Go ahead and click on that like button, crush the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell to stay up to date with everything we're producing. As always, we hope you're doing well. We hope you're staying safe. We'll see you in the next one.